What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to do with you guys. This is the Sabibi Knives Shredder, a knife that I unboxed a while back and definitely one uh, that caught my interest right away. I've got a lot to say about this knife. There will be, by the way, there will be an Amazon affiliate link down in the description if you decide either right now or after the review is over that you would like to purchase this knife for yourself. Also down in the description is a link to my Patreon. So if you'd like to get your hands on some cool stickers or be part of my once a week Patreon exclusive content, go ahead and follow that link, have a look around, and then uh, you can join any tier. The, uh, the support would absolutely mean the world to me. So let's go ahead and get some measurements on this guy. Uh, overall length of the shredder coming in way longer than I would have guessed, eight and a half inches. For whatever reason, I think it's just the profile and just how light it is, which we're gonna talk about too. Sorry, I'm wiping fingerprints off. Um, it just doesn't seem like an eight and a half inch knife. It just, I mean, it's it's big, it's full size knife. It just doesn't seem eight and a half inch big, right? But it is eight and a half inches. Uh, can't yeah that yeah there we go. Um, from tip to scale, you're looking at yeah boy, you could call it about three point seven five inches, and then your actual cutting edge is probably about three point three three point four because of that generous forward choil there. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. Rat 1 coming in at 8.6 inches overall. So you can see there the shredder just, just beating it by a hair. Um, how about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. So a little longer than the PM2. How about up against the uh, Benchmade Group Tillion, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue coming in at 8 inches overall. And last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3. Spyderco Para 3 coming in at about seven and a quarter inches overall. So how's the action on this guy? Well, uh, in typical Savivi fashion, um, the action is pretty darn good. It will probably get better over time. This is a fairly skinny blade. Um, it's not ground super tall. I mean, thickness on it, it's, it's very thin. So there's not a lot of heft to it. It is running on bearings. And I mean, this is brand new. This knife was sent to me, by the way, by the Apex Pass Run Group. Um, so by extension, the manufacturer. Um, and I think I'm one of the first to take a look at it in the group. Um, it's definitely not, there's not a lot of, um, you know, uh, friction or grittiness in there. It's really just tightness. And I think because the blade is not super duper heavy, but let me say this, um, it is much the same as any other Civivi knife that I have ever handled. Um, and the action is fantastic. The flipper tab is a good shape. The detent is a good strength. Um, everything is set up perfectly to do that. Uh, and yes, you can very easily, despite me missing it there, do the reverse flick. There's plenty of room to get your finger in there. Just, you know, uh, regardless of where your hands sit because of the size of your hands, your uh, middle finger back here can easily find that slot and do the reverse flick and it's great. It is very smooth. I'm very happy with it, definitely. Um, so Civivi, for those of you who don't know, I'm sure everybody knows right now, Civivi is, um, it's, it's Wii, it's essentially Wii's budget line. Uh, Wii Knives makes uh, uh, some knives kind of in the mid-range in terms of price, like super high quality, but kind of mid-range, uh, and then they have like the super high end, and then they have their budget range, which is Civivi, uh, though Civivi has kind of, along with some other companies, have they've really set the bar um, for, uh, uh, budget knives. Definitely. So, um, I've, I've really enjoyed Civivi. In fact, uh, it's not here with me today. Um, the, uh, Civivi Praxis is actually the knife that I crowned as the very best budget knife, um, that, uh, you could possibly get for your money. And Civivi has a whole bunch of knives in their line that are close. I mean, you kind of get these types of, of designs with Civivi. And I think, uh, myself and, and most other people are just really happy with them. So, uh, anyways, we are looking at, um, liners that have been milled a little bit on the inside steel liners. And then we have G10 and then we have a, let's go ahead and get a measurement on the blade. So you guys know, you know, when I say that the blade is thin, put a, put a number to that. Let's get back here. We can actually measure it. Am I on? Uh, let's do that again. Cause it can't, it's, it's gotta be thinner than that. I'm going to, I was guessing about 115,000, or maybe even less. Yeah. It's saying 113, 114. So call it 115, some room for error with these um, calipers, which aren't the best in the world. So you have not a super fat frame, G10 milled steel liners and a blade stock thickness of 115 thousandths. Coming in at a completely reasonable 
four ounces, which is almost exactly the same uh, as the uh, blade length. So, you know, for those of you who go by the whole ounce and inch thing, you'd be very, very happy with that. Uh, no issues whatsoever. Um, so anyways, for materials, like I said, we've got G10 steel liners. And on this one here, can we get that? Can you see that D2? It says right there. Um, I always appreciate how Civivi does. Excuse me, I'm wiping things off here again. I appreciate that Civivi goes out of their way to just keep everything off the blade. And they print the steel on there, but it's just this little teeny tiny thing. You know, it's like, so you get to enjoy this knife and it's aesthetics excuse me of course for some reason i've once again managed to not turn my um uh, my uh uh phone on airplane mode there we go we'll go ahead and do it right there in the middle of the review uh sorry about the shakiness there but anyways um they uh they put their logo right here and then they just keep the entire blade sterile and i i really like that um that's that's nice it allows you to enjoy your knife and it's like we know we know who we bought it from you know because we we paid for it right it's not like we need to be re reminded by a big billboard on our blade constantly so i really appreciate that so um what we've got here for the blade shape is i mean i some people would call it a drop point some people might call it a clip point um because of this area up here in any case um, true to the name, the at the final edge down here, it is extremely thin. Um, this is very worthy of the name Shredder. I had to actually move that back to find out where the edge was. But it gets ridiculously thin behind the edge. Um, for those of you looking for a performance-oriented budget knife, I'll tell you right now, just the blade on this thing um, is going to hit the nail on the head for a lot of you guys. Um, absolutely. And that in, com in combination with the fact that you really can get the meat of your finger up there under that choil. You can see there plenty of room for my finger and lots of area or lots of room up here to get my thumb to rest on this jimping. It's just fantastic. We have um, a satin finish on the blade, which Civivi always does a great job with. No sharpness up here, definitely. We do have a, an extremely delicate tip. So for those of you who like to do tasks with your knives that are not really knife tasks, um, be cognizant of that. This is not uh, this is not the like a going to be a Hinder XM18 tip or anything similar. It's very thin to begin with, and it tapers down to an extremely pokey and very delicate tip. Uh, some people like that though. Um, you know, I myself have used a folding knife to dig splinters out of my hands, and uh, I've always appreciated that in the PM2 having a tip that I can really get in and do some fine work with if I have to. But again, you know, the trade-off is, is durability. So just be cognizant of that. Um, let me point this out to you guys. While the area right here to engage uh, the blade, whether you're gonna just pinch it open like that, you're gonna pinch it open here, or you're actually gonna do a reverse flick, it's very easy to engage. I, I'm very happy with how they did that. Um, but it's, I need to point this out. It's kind of sharp up here. And the, the reason I'm telling you is because I like to do the reverse flick. If you don't like to do the reverse flick, you're not going to care about this. But I feel like this, this area right here, the way that they made that, is like, you know, catering to people who like to do that. If you like to do this, there's a little bit, you can see it on my fingernail. It's been slowly tearing away at my fingernail. And that's because this area right here is just a little sharp. Um, see what I mean? So every time you do that on this knife, it's gonna, it's fine. You know, for those of you who don't cringe at the feeling of your, your fingernail being grinded away, you're not gonna care. But for me, every time I do it, I'm like, Ugh, and it's a little bit kind of nail, you know, nails on a chalkboard kind of, it's not that big of a deal. I just really wish that they had knocked that area down just a little bit more. It's definitely more than like my Spyderco PM2. Uh, absolutely more than the um, than the uh, Spyderco uh, Para 3, but that's been tumbled. Um, I For that reason, I think I might like to see less satin finishes on these knives and more, um, you know, tumbled finishes. Um, but uh, I, I don't know which is more expensive for them to do, you know, and of course, this being a budget brand, they probably want to keep the cost down. I don't know. Not a deal breaker, something to be aware of, absolutely. Um, plenty of room to engage the liner lock, you can see there very easy. I mean, in terms of, um, you know, a fidget friendly knife, like this, they've nailed it. You know, there's nothing to complain about. Um, Civivi's continuing to do what they, uh, what they always do. And that's, uh, just 
can like create a good model, you know, with a good design. There is shouldering back here, so you can see back of the blade does wrap around that stop pin nicely. You do, of course, have the Civivi uh, dress side pivot. This looks to be extremely, you know, aggressive texturing, but let me compare it here with the bag litter, which has, uh, I, you know, honestly, they're about the same. Like, I, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest here. I complained about this texturing, but they're about the same. Maybe it's because this has been carried. This now belongs to a friend of mine. And maybe after a while, the texturing gets knocked down a little bit and it doesn't feel as rough. Um, this is more aggressive texturing than uh, like what I see on the uh, the Kaiser Dome in here. You can see there the texturing is just a little bit more aggressive. It's not a texturing that's going to shred your pants like immediately, but possibly over time. I would call it medium texturing. Um, some people are going to like that. You know, it's definitely going to lock your hands in and some people aren't. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, let's go ahead and find out what the sizes are for the uh, handle hardware and pivot hardware. Of course, you can see here <clears throat> my handy dandy Wea bit selector. These things are awesome, super inexpensive, uh, as well as my Wea magnetic driver. Um, you can find links for this stuff down in the description, as well as, like I said, a link for this guy and links for some of the really cool knives that I show on the channel every day, whether they are more high-end US production knives or budget knives. Everything is nicely categorized down there so you guys can find exactly what you're looking for and scratch that itch that I know you have because you're watching my channel. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna guess that that handle uh, screw right there is a T8, and that's gonna make me really happy. Uh, what do we have right here? T8, there it is, okay. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that guy in there, and we're gonna check. And yes, it's a T8. What do we have for the pivot screw? T8, thank you, Sabivi, that's uh, awesome. So I preach, I, I preach this. Um, don't I, I don't like T6 because I think the head is too weak and I think the, the bit head, there's a chance to strip it even if you have a high quality driver set. Um, if you go T8, it's strong enough and then if you keep it T8 on the handle screws and T8 on the pivot screw, then you can take everything apart without having to change out your head. It's just nice. Yeah, it only saves you a couple of seconds, but it's just nice. I like that. I don't like my, my heads and tools and stuff rolling all over the place, so I appreciate that. On top of that, we have a perfect setup here. We have two handle screws, we got a little backspacer and then two more on the other side. Easy, minimal uh, hardware, it's just fantastic. By the way, didn't say this, nicely chamfered all the way around. Full steel liners that have been milled out. This is exactly the way that I like this. It's absolutely my preference. If you wanna know my preferences on budget knives, you can uh, check out my quest for the perfect budget knife series. I have a playlist. Anyways, um, cool uh, little flush backspacer back here. It's um, uh, G10, and then you have this little slot cut out for a lanyard hole. That's perfect amongst other, there's a lot of designs, a lot of different ways to do this that makes it to where the pocket clip does not have to make room for the, uh, you know, the, the lanyard thing. For those of you who like lanyards, I think this is one of the best setups out there. It does kind of wrap almost all the way around to the butt. It's great, it, it's nice contrast, you know, black to gray to black to gray to black, it's nice. Um, and then moving over to the other side, we do have a typical uh, pocket clip for a Civivi knife. Not my favorite style, but I, I, I have to say that I kind of enjoy the black coating on this. It just, it, I'm not gonna say it makes it look stealth. It just kind of looks, it's kind of classy tactical. <laughs> Is that, a, is that a thing? Tactical tuxedo? Anyways, um, I don't like the bills on these because I feel like they grab stuff easily and they can get broken off, but not that big of a deal. It's still a pretty good clip design. You can see the screws underneath the uh, clip are recessed, um, and that's going to make it really easy to get in and out of your pocket. Um, I'm doing it off camera here, but uh, to demonstrate, yeah, it's extremely easy to get in and out of my pocket, and it does truly carry deep you know, with only about that much sticking up out of your pocket, so that's great. Also, carry profile is fantastic. We didn't talk about this. Up against two knives that, as I usually say, have, in my opinion, very awkward carry profiles and nobody ever complains about them. I'm, I'm included in that. I don't, I don't think they're that bad in the pocket either. You can see they're much taller. And then in terms of thickness, uh, let's do pair of three up against the backlash, or the, uh, I keep wanting to call this the backlash, uh, the shredder, they're they're very similar in overall thickness, so no issue there. Speaking of the backlash, um, this knife re this absolutely reminds me of the backlash. I'd like to see uh, 
direct comparison video. If I can get my hands on another backlash, I would love to do a versus video, uh, backlash versus shredder, because they are super similar in uh, profile and weight and all that stuff. Um, anyways, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, uh, pocket clips, great. No issue with that whatsoever. Uh, carry profile is great. Um, the uh, lockup and centering, you can see here lockup is coming in at a pretty typical 50% for Civivi. That's normal, perfect centering. There is no blade play up, down, left, or right. Um, so again, stuff that I could re you know, actually complain about. Oh, by the way, there is a position for uh, left-handed people. So people who um, you know, don't mind a right-handed liner lock, you know, but are, are tip-up people, which I think is the way that it should be on a flipper, um, then you know, if you're left-handed, then that's, uh, that's, that's good for you guys. Um, so anyways, things that I can honestly, you know, realistically complain about. Number one, the blade length, of course, is not going to be legal in all areas. So for those of you who uh, live in an area where you cannot carry a blade that is over three inches, you know, or over three and a half inches, I think this is going to be out for you. Um, but uh, beyond that, uh, I always nitpick the pocket clip bill. I don't like that. I like pocket clips like this that kind of dip. And it creates a situation where the bill is not quite so hooky, you know, wanting to grab onto things. But again, no big deal. Really, the biggest issue with this guy is this area back here. I just kind of, it makes me grind my teeth every time I do it. I just would like to see that area up here be knocked down a little bit more. You Can you see what it is that I'm talking about? It's just kind of sharp up underneath there on both sides. It looks like it's knocked down, but it definitely does grab your finger a little bit. Not that big of a deal. So what's the price on this guy? Uh, on Blade HQ, these things go for uh, 60 bucks. Uh, sometimes on Amazon, you know, you'll see prices fluctuate. Like I said, for the third time, there is a link down there in my description where you guys can take a look and see what they've got it priced at. Um, but uh, do I think that's a good price? D2, G10, uh, great, uh, you know, ergonomics, great flipping action, uh, lightweight design, um, a re ridiculously performance oriented um, edge. Yeah, of course, it's a fantastic, Civivi uh, like makes great knives for the money. I uh, Truthfully, I think this is one of the better knives in their lineup. Um, would I say it's better than the Backlash? I don't know, I'd have to compare it directly with the Backlash. Um, do I like it more than the Praxis? I don't like it more than the Praxis, but the Praxis is like for my specific needs, it kind of all comes together. This is definitely a, you know, takes a, it takes up less room in the pocket than the Praxis, right? But you still get a lot of cutting edge. Um, rest assured, if you spend the money on this, you're definitely gonna be happy with it. This area up here might bother you a little bit, but this is a fantastic, fantastic knife. Um, I, can, I can recommend it 10 times over. It's definitely gonna go on my most recommended knives playlist, and it's also gonna go on my cheap knives I like playlist. So if you haven't checked out one or the other, uh, check out those playlists, absolutely. Guys, um, that's going to be pretty much it. I don't know that there's anything else that I really can say about this knife. Um, this is just great. It's an awesome knife. And I'm sure, you know, some people will, you, you guys will probably see other reviews out there. Uh, a lot of people saying, you know, that it's, that it is uh, Civivi's best knife. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, they just have so many good designs. It's just really hard to say exactly what their best knife is, but uh, it's just another home run from Civivi. Absolutely. Anyways, um, that's going to be pretty much it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this metal complex. They'll go right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.